Well, hello there. I'm Jay. Welcome to my booth. I'm excited yet again to be here because I have more of your lovely samples and work. I get to listen to it and see what we can find. A little bit of housekeeping before we dive in. If you'd like to offer your feedback, criticism, critiques, support down below, just make sure that you keep it positive and constructive. And if you'd like to receive feedback like this for your work, uh, there's a form in the description of this video. Fill it out, send me some audio, and we'll feature you in a video coming up. Lastly, if you'd want some coaching, it's down there as well. Our first sample today is from Joni. It's a series of commercials. We'll listen to a couple of them and see what we can find. Take it away, Joni. It's Macy's Big Home Sale with an extra 20% off great deals on fresh updates like 30% off hotel collection and Charter Club Damask Designs. Plus, save on specials like the top-selling Radley Sectional, $21.99 now at Macy's. Really nice work on this one, Joni. Uh, there are a few things that I think immediately. Firstly, if we were to consider this whole mp3 file with all these different ads a demo for you i think this is a great one to choose to lead off because uh firstly in listening to your whole demo i get the sense that and correct me if i'm wrong this is a good representation of you energetically as a both person and a performer you seem like a just positive uh energetic person generally and capturing that in your first ad in something that's upbeat forward-footed and has sort of a driving energy to it that captures attention i think is a really great move so not, well done putting this guy first um in addition to that this ad i think um you do you have a really great facility with your pitch and musicality of your voice in lifting and serving up certain words for the listener to hear and latch on to. If we take a listen to the first little bit here. It's Macy's big. Already, we hear it's Macy's. If I'm just half listening, I hear Macy's lifted out and served up to me. And I know immediately context, what I'm listening for, who I'm listening it for, to it for. Uh, and it always, when the ad or when the uh, company or product is first named, it's really important to do just that. So well done. Big home sale with an extra 20% off great deals on fresh updates. Great deals, fresh updates, 20% off, all lifted up and served to me on a platter. And I can pick it out even if I'm not really paying full attention, which is really, really well done. My only thoughts critically on this spot, I think you nailed what this kind of ad is really nicely. I would be curious in this middle section if what it sounds like if you changed the tone, if you made it um, confessional almost. That was just a thought that came to me in listening to it this last time in going from, hey, Macy's to, and we also have this thing. And then also here's that and here's where you can find it. Sort of that flow where it, instead of hitting the same-ish note, it has a little bit of an energy shift in there, which I think just might be interesting. In addition to that, um, I'd be curious to hear, again, I think you nailed what the ad is already, just as another option, what it would sound like if you made it, uh, if you imagined yourself, say, sitting in your living room or at your dining table, having coffee with a friend, and they're like, hey, I need a new couch or something like that. And you get to tell them, oh, hey, Macy's, and then you get to tell this ad to the person sitting right across from you. And the reason why that difference is interesting to me is ads like this specifically can go into sort of a salesy mode, and then there's a conversational side to it. I don't think you went full salesy necessarily, but I'd be curious if we leaned more into the, hey, you're at a table with your friend sitting across from you just as a thing to try. But again, I think you did a really nice job. Let's listen to the next one. And for a brief moment, we'll share everything. Your fears, your triumphs, your challenges. We understand and we won't let you go through them alone. Kawea Health is built for this moment in your life. We are courageous, resilient, ready. Health is our passion and excellence is always our focus. Okay. I love that it's high energy, here's this thing, Macy's, 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 and then the second thing in this is a complete energy shift, complete tone shift. That's a really nice juxtaposition in terms of structuring a demo. So again, nice 
creative choice there. With this ad, I think you have a really good grasp on what it should sound like. Like an ad like this, um, it starts off, you've got the tone that it's sort of sympathetic, empathetic, supportive, we're here to take care, for, care of you. And then it shifts right here. For this moment in your life, we are courageous, resilient, ready. It becomes strong and trustworthy, and th these are people who are going to take care of you now. Um, so that shift, I think, is really, really well done. The thing that I would recommend with this spot, um, as I said, I think you nail the way it should sound. And the next step would be to make it really to a person, similar to what I was talking about with uh, the Macy's ad. Someone's sitting right in front of you, and they've just told you that they're going through something pretty challenging in their life, and they really need support and help to get through it. And you, as Kawea Health, you are there to support, and you get to just talk to this person. And that perspective shift and investing in that emotional weight of, hey, I'm here for you— I think is necessary and is really going to take you far in an ad like this um, because that's the key. It's you really want the person listening to feel like they'll be well taken care of with you. And I think you're really, really close and just investing a little bit more there will take you a long way. The last one I want to listen to is this one. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, finding a needle in a haystack. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So this one, in terms of the script, is so different from the other two we listened to. And in this one, I think you have so much room to kick the structure to the curb and just have fun with it. This first bit. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, finding a needle in a haystack. When they say it, when the script says can be like, well, finding a needle in it, that's giving you license to run with it. In contrast to the others, I think this is a great opportunity to branch out and loosen up and just make it a little crazier um, in as many words. But all in all, great work, Joni and keep me updated how it goes. Next up, we've got Kelly. And Kelly, I don't know if this is an audiobook or if it's a sort of, uh, but, well, you'll all hear. It's, it's a really interesting and cool narration. And Kelly will listen to about 30-ish uh, seconds of it. From high above, Atherton is easy to spot. Five square miles of green completely surrounded by bustling businesses, dense neighborhoods, and busy roadways that connect San Francisco and the Silicon Valley. An island in suburbia, Atherton is a place where residents cherish their independence and are committed to preserving the unique rural beauty of the town. Kelly, you got one of those voices and pacings that we could just listen to forever. It's really, really pleasant. Uh, you were particularly concerned with your flow pacing and if uh, I had any tips for conversationality um, or a conversational tone, I believe. So uh, as far as your tone and pacing, I love that you're taking your time. You're not rushing through anything you give us a lot of uh, space to process these images, to live with the images, and you do a really good job painting the pictures for us. This first bit. From high above, Atherton is easy to spot. Like, that's such a beautiful image that you do such a good job laying out for us. In terms of uh, your questions of flow, pacing, and notes, I think what you have is really, really great foundationally. And if you so chose, there's flexibility in narrations of this ilk to move through things at different rates. Uh, so you can paint images at moments from high above. Atherton is uh, 
it looks, I can't remember, but you can paint the picture and then you can move through some stuff. And by having sort of pace and flow variants or variations, you can give more weight to certain images and then let people just sort of process the information as you go through it and then maybe lift up another image. Um, because as I hear it now, uh, it's not entirely this, but a lot of it is a very similar tone, a very similar pace, and a very similar painting of the images. And it's beautiful, and <laughs> I love that you stick with it. And it, it would, I think, just take it at the next level if you allowed yourself to break out of that and uh, flow through things a little bit in terms of the conversational approach. Um, I think that would be the next step. And similar to what I was saying with Joni, uh, in the way you do it, you do such a great job painting the pictures and reading the story. And then you can go a little bit further in telling the story to a person right next to you. Um, just in that, like, if I'm on a stage orating to someone versus if uh, I'm just here talking to you, those two differences you can sort of play with. And I think this piece in particular offers opportunities for sort of the grand picture and then the little tiny bits that you can talk about. Uh, but all in all, Kelly, really, really lovely work. And I... I can't wait to hear more of your stuff because this is truly lovely. And I'd tell us where this piece is because I'd be interested to hear about it um, as well. All right. So our next and final sample for the day, we've got a video game and character demo. We'll listen to a few sections of it and see what we can come up with. But the cool thing, they sent a engineered version and then I asked for one without uh, music and SFX so that we could talk about the performance a little bit more. But take a listen to this engineering because it's cool. Wear headphones if you're not for this because it's got really neat panning effects and all that jazz. A lot of people want me dead. They call it justice. I'm the only one who knows the truth. All I have left is the wind by my side. There is only death. Mine or yours. <laughs> Sasaki! Sasayo! Oh crap, this is so not good! They're gaining on us! Oh, they should have stole Jim's bike! I'll head towards the island. Distract them! So, you see what I'm saying? Really quick, really neat effects, and the transitions between all of the little scenes that are in this demo are equally as impressive with the panning, the fading, they weave into each other really, really beautifully. So, nice job there. Let's talk about the VO exclusively. Uh, I'm going to hop around a fair amount. A lot of people want me dead. They call it justice. I'm the only one who knows the truth. All I have left is the wind by my side. There is only death. Mine or yours? So in this first scene, admittedly, I'm not 100% sure, certain that these are two dudes about to duke it out. Uh, and my solution for that would simply be because I know you have range based off of the rest of your demo here, cast the two characters with different voices or at least more different voices than these two fellas. If they are two dudes, I think that would be a great way to do this first spot. I think it's a great scene to set up and the way you've engineered it is really nice as well. Uh, you had asked a little bit about emotionality in that um, you find those notes kind of vague. Let me take a stab at it. Uh, so in this one, for example, this line. A lot of people want me dead. They call it justice. I'm the only one who knows the truth. This line offers you a lot of opportunities to get really into the character's situation in that like, hey, has he been on the road for months with assassins coming after him constantly? And if that's the case, let's show us that a little bit in his voice. Or if conversely, he's a hard dude and people have crossed him and not phased him at all, let us hear that. My point is, at essence, right now as it stands, he's kind of right in the middle of the road. I can't really tell one way or the other what the extreme of his circumstance is. And a good rule of thumb with most or often with uh, video game and animation stuff 
is if you're given an opportunity to take something to an extreme, go there because uh, that's probably where they're going to ask you to go. And so in this one, I want to hear his history. I want to hear what brought him to this point. Uh, similarly, in this guy, the kid on the bike... Oh, crap! This is so not good! They're gaining on us! Oh, they should have stole Jim's bike! I get such a vivid picture of him frantic, pedaling, running. And so I think in this section, you have the opportunity to, again crank it up even more and you can add if you'd like <sighs> oh crap <sighs> we shouldn't have stole jim's bike <sighs> uh and that sort of breath because breath is the thing that makes these characters alive it's why in anime you'll see like uh, uh, all the time because it is the like reaction shot and so you can dial that guy up even further let's take a listen to this guy Alrighty, do you smell that <gasps> i'm burning I'm burning! <laughs> and I smell delicious. An amazing character. Exceptionally well done. I don't know if you play Overwatch, but this reminds me of Junkrat a bit. Um, same thing here. When he's such a lovely character and you play him really well, and I would just make this performance extreme. The freak out moment of him realizing that, because it has like a, a trio of comedy thing going on. There's the first moment where he's like... <sighs> You smell that. And then the realization, oh my God, I'm on fire. Crank that to 20. Go as hard as you can. And then it'll make the switch when he's like, oh yeah, I smell kind of good, actually. It'll make it not only way more funny, but it'll make this character even more bonkers than they already are by the fact that they're loving the way that they smell. To all three of you who submitted for today's video, thank you so much for sending it along. Again, if you would like feedback like this, uh, there's a form in the description of this video. And if you like this stuff, you find it helpful and you think others might as well and you wouldn't mind clicking the buttons, it helps us find, it helps them find us. Lastly, if you want to support me directly, you can just buy me a coffee. Until the next one of these, be well and I will see you there. Toodles.